Okay, I'm going to pull this uh, stator winding off and I'm taking the wire connections to the can out. Let's see if we can get this off of here. There we go. Okay, all we've got left now is the compressor. Now, one of the things I can see right off the bat, because this, the through bolts went right through here, like that. Well, that's the bearing right here, and it's locked up solid. So, our problem with this thing had to do with the, uh, with this single bearing here getting locked up. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you. Now, here's the connections on the outside. Now, that's actually kind of a little uh, ceramic button inside there. I think this rubber on the outside, I think it is. can't remember for sure. Yeah, it's kind of rubbery. And then there's a, a ceramic button on the inside. Believe it or not, I don't get a lot of leaks out of these things. I was, when I first was... Um, introduced into this business there was a lot of talk about leaks around these things but I'll tell you the only time I usually find leaks is when the motor shorts out and burns these windings or burns those terminals completely off and it just blows a hole right through so that's obviously a leak you can't fix anyway that's the terminals here's a look at the compressor fully removed it is a two-cylinder opposed these are the heads, either side, oil pump right there, and I'm going to pull some parts off this thing and you can see what's inside. Here's a look with pretty much everything taken apart. Uh, note here, I've got this head off. Uh, this is actually the valve plate. This is the head itself right here. And the piston goes in there. Okay. And you can see the other side I have not taken apart and it still has the head intact. And you can see the piston down inside there. Okay, take a closer look at this piston. Looking close at this piston and connecting rod, you can see that we have little nylon buttons, which I just lost one, to keep the uh, wrist pin in, keep it from scoring the cylinder. It has one ring on it. Uh, the bearing is integral with the uh, connecting rod. There's some damage here. Maybe a little hard to see for you, but there is damage on that uh, bearing. Probably an oil situation with this thing. I told you the one bearing had failed uh, And it's the farthest away from the oil, so it's probably a lack of oil that did it But let's uh, let's look a little further That's a valve plate now. I'm going to spend an entire video on a valve plate and how they're configured In order to make this thing work. This is a fairly special type of uh, valve and valve plate so we'll get into that a little farther on now here's the crank and you can see that bearing has seized up and so that's why this thing failed there's a little bit of wear there on the crank throws uh looks like there's a little bit of garbage was in this one who knows that's pretty much the guts of these things the this part here to give you a kind of an idea, uh, in order to get this apart, there's this little rod, it's actually a little shaft, or a piece of tubing, it was right there, and it tends to suck oil up from the bottom because this is down, and it runs it through the crank right there, and that little tiny hole, you can see that hole, uh, and runs it up through the throws and you can see the holes here in the throws and there's undoubtedly one here okay so the next one we're going to look at is going to be the valve plates and how they work with the piston 
and it's uh, it's all about keeping this thing from slugging. That's it on this one.